Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become and everything else is secondary. Steve Jobs. Hey there, I'm Ashley Drummond, a fitness, nutrition, and mindset specialist to high performers looking to take their body and life to the next level. What exactly is a high performer? High performers are individuals who are growth-minded that aim to be their best self and truly want to reach their full potential in life. People like this tend to fall under the categories of fitness enthusiasts, personal trainers, entrepreneurs, athletes, CEOs, top sales professionals, or they are a leader in their own industry. So if that sounds like you, then you've come to the right place. Since my early 20s, I have been obsessed with human potential and the power of our minds. I've spent the last 15 plus years helping men and women transform their body and their life using the tools of the right nutrition, fitness, and mindset training to get there. I created this podcast to share with you the experience and knowledge I have gained as a coach, an entrepreneur, and a fellow high performer to help educate and empower you in your own life to become your absolute best self and to crush your goals. If you're interested in working with me as your own personal coach, then head to ashleydrummonds.com and schedule a free consultation with me where we will talk about your goals and find out if we are a good fit. Again, you can head to ashleydrummonds.com, set up your free discovery call, and let's help you become your strongest, fittest, and most empowered self. So welcome to the Phoenix Rising Podcast. I am so glad you're here. It's time to dig deep, find out what you're truly made of, and rise up to your full potential. Hello and welcome to the Phoenix Rising Podcast season number three. Isn't that nuts? Season number three. You know, when I started this back in 2020, I think it was 2020. Yeah. Beginning of 2020, I didn't really have any big plan for this. It was kind of just leading with inspiration of like, you know, there's a lot of things I wish I could say to help people, to empower them, but also to take the experience and the knowledge that I've gained over the last 15 plus years of working with a lot of clients in their fitness and nutrition to just share with other people in the hopes that in some way it would help them. And then now being here in 2023 and getting good feedback from you guys, but also still having like so much to say to help you. Like I just it's crazy. You know, sometimes when you take the leap with the universe, you have no idea where you're going. And then you wind up in a totally different place with things working out better than you imagined a few years later. So welcome to the Phoenix Rising podcast season number three. If this is your first time tuning in, and this is the episode you landed on for the first time, welcome. Welcome. I am so happy that you are here. I am all about having deep conversations about life and I hope you have pen and paper because we're going to hit on a lot of different points. I was thinking about how I wanted to start out this first episode for 2023. And I mean, it's pretty cliche, but it just seems like what else are you going to talk about other than a new year being a new opportunity to really take control of your life and to create the life that you want? So That's what we're going to talk about today is how to tap into your power to create the life that you want for 2023. Now, a little bit of a update, in update, yeah, a little bit of in update, correct my grammar. So I kind of cut last season's podcast short for a lot of different reasons. And some of this will all come full circle into this topic, but like, One of the reasons being is I was kind of trying to figure out where I wanted this to go. I was producing a lot of the episodes for you guys. Not really sure like what I wanted to come of this. So I took a break around last mid-July just to kind of re-strategize, focus, get clear on my vision so that I can take intentional action, which there's a whole podcast episode on that too. If you tend to struggle with taking action, go listen to that one. I couldn't tell you which one it was, but if you scroll through, you will find how to take intentional action. So I wanted to make sure that the content I was giving you guys was in alignment with the direction and the bigger vision that I had for this. And part of the process in doing that 
was me clearing out and letting go of other areas that were taking up some energy in my life. And one of those things that I am very excited to tell you, and I can tell you now, is I had made the decision to sell my other business, what the abs protein pancakes that has been around since 2013, 2014. Um, I decided to let that go and it now has new owners and it's hard to explain and a lot of people didn't really understand it, but being in that business, I started it with a very clear goal of why I wanted to do it and where it was going to go. And somewhere around like 20, 2019, I really just got to the place of feeling like I had gotten everything that I wanted to out of that business. And I'm very proud of it and still stand behind the idea of what it is. But it just got to the point where I felt like I was boxed in. Felt like, felt like I was trying to put on a shirt that I wore in eighth grade and I still love it. And it's still my favorite shirt, except for it just doesn't fit me anymore. And I need to let it go and let somebody else have it. That's kind of what it felt like. And the more I put the shirt back on, you're like, this really doesn't fit me anymore. That's what having that business felt like. It's like, I love it. I love everything that it is. But I just don't feel like this is the big thing that I came here to do. So I took some time off from doing the podcast last year to really gather everything and Not only the logistics of letting go of that business, but there's a lot of things I had to let go to. The identity I had wrapped up in it, the emotions behind just, there's a lot of fear. What am I going to do once I let this go? Who am I going to be? Who do I want to become? What's my next direction? If I let this go, then I have to start all over again and start something brand new. And starting something brand new means I have to totally embrace that feeling of being clueless and not knowing 100% what I'm doing. And there's a lot of fear that's wrapped behind that. So having said all of that, like the break that I took last year was basically I sold abs. I spent a lot of time accepting it and spending time in gratitude for everything that I learned in that business, for the journey of it, for the people and the experiences, and just gave myself the time to let go so that I can fully open up and let in to this new journey with this podcast and what I've been doing with a lot of clients. So That's the update on that. I couldn't really share that. Very few people knew that that was even something that I was working through last year. And now that I can share that with you guys, I'm excited because I'm now able to fully open myself up to this podcast, to coaching and working with more people on their health and their fitness and mindset. But it's definitely a process. So with that... The whole conversation today about tapping into your power to create the life that you want for 2023 involves a lot of things with you being willing to take responsibility for your life, but also you're co-creating with something much bigger than just what you got going in your mind. I believe that we all came here with a purpose. I believe every single person has unique skills, passions, interest, and drive that are in alignment with that purpose. And I believe that the way that we live a life that we love, that fulfills us, and is part of all that is by listening to our soul, listening to our gut, listening to the things that pull us. Sometimes though, and wrapping that story back around, Sometimes to fully step into who you came here to be involves fully letting go of the things that no longer serve you or that are taking up the space. And so like I've described this with a couple people of with that business and with abs of letting go, even though, I mean, it was automated, it ran itself, it was... I mean, literally, I was spending just a few hours a week on it because I had intentionally built a business that I would not have to work in and it kind of worked on its own. But even with that, there was still this string that was attached to me that took up energetic space. 
And what I wanted to do was free up all the mental, emotional space so that I can fully open up to this. And going back to listening to your soul is part of our soul and the way that it works is it prompts us, it pulls us, it pulls us in one direction. There's that thing that keeps coming up, that idea that won't go away, that crazy thought that you keep having that makes no sense, but like no matter what you do, you can't get rid of it. And the more we follow that pool and listen to that, naturally the process is letting go and shedding away of the old. So as you create your goals and as it's a new year for 2023 and people are all talking about like, oh my God, I'm going to cut out alcohol and sugar and I'm going to get in the best shape of my life and I'm going to do this and that. I would say to throw all of that out the window and be honest with yourself, not of what goal do you feel like is going to make a huge difference in society or what do you feel like should be your goal? Like, all right, maybe last year you made 50 grand. Your goal should be 75 grand. Maybe last year you squatted 100 pounds. Now your goal should be 105 pounds. Like all of these things are great. But I would love to encourage you to dig deeper. Stop focusing on the things that are on the surface because what's going to happen is when people set goals that are on the surface, they're not actually tapping into that deep, true power that's inside that wants to come out and help you become everything that you're going to become. So a lot of times when I work with clients and they're like, okay, I'm excited to work with you because I want to lose five pounds and I want to deadlift this. And then I really want to just boost my confidence. I'm like, that is fantastic. Let's talk about what's going on underneath that though. Like all of that is the icing on the cake. But like, let's really get deep and like, what is it your soul is looking for? What is it that your heart really wants? Like what moves you? What opens you up? Then once we tap into that, all these other things, the weight loss, the money, the career, the friends, the relationship, All those things are naturally going to happen and come to you because now you are in touch with what's really going on inside and you become a magnet and the energy that shifts everything outside of you. So 2023, maybe you already have your goals written out and you're probably like, well, crap, like that's what I had was like new car, new house, this much money, this career, like all these things. And I just told you to throw that out the window. Great. We're going to talk now about how to tap into your true power to create what you really want, which what every single person really wants is you want to live a life on purpose that lights you up every single day. You want to be around people that light you up every day. You want to feel like you are making an impact and that your existence has meaning behind it. That's what you really want. Everything else is just the surface trying to get you to dig deeper. So in order to tap into your power to create the life that you want for 2023, you have to take 100% responsibility for your life. This is something that is so hard for people to swallow because that means that everything in your life right now, from whatever your health and fitness level is, to the career that you love or hate, to the house that you love or hate, the friendships, the relationship, all of it, you have to stop putting the power on everything and everyone else outside of you and take responsibility that you have chosen every single thing in your life. This sucks. Let's be honest. This sucks because that means you are the one that has to do the work to make the change. So it is so much easier to say you're stuck, to say you don't know what to do, to talk about how you're lost, Because what that does is it puts the power on someone else or something outside of you to keep you from having to empower yourself to do what you know you need to do in order to make the changes that are necessary in order for you to have the life that you want. Anytime somebody tells me they don't know, I'm like, eh, I don't really believe that. I think you do know. I think maybe you're saying you don't know because it keeps you in a place of not having to make the changes that you want. People, like for example, going back to the health and fitness space, since that's like my bread and butter, people talk about like, I want to lose weight and get in shape. I just don't know how. Mm, I mean, I think you do. I think you need 
to stop eating the foods that you're eating and you know you need to exercise more. So that's not really the truth. The truth isn't that you don't know. So let's be honest, what's the truth? And the truth usually comes down to that. Like, well, if I say that I don't know, or if I act like I'm lost, or if I say that I'm stuck, I can give away my power to somebody else to get somebody else to do the work for me and make the choice. So this is a huge thing. Take 100% responsibility for your life. The other thing you have to take a look at is what role are you currently playing? So all this means is that you take on people, experiences, and things in your life based on the internal role that you are telling yourself. Let's say you have the internal role of the victim. Everything happens to me. Nobody likes me. I just can't get a big break. Life hates me. The universe hates me. Everybody around me is just an asshole. Whatever. When I hear things like this or you find out that this happens all the time and every time like it pisses me off because I'm like, that is such a pity, weepy, like four-year-old child response is when something big and good happens to somebody. So like, let's say you find out your friend just got a huge promotion and is making twice as much as you. Let's say you find out that your gym partner just PR'd by 10, 20 pounds and you haven't PR'd in a year. You know what people do all the time who are playing the victim role and the victim mindset and they hear about somebody else's happiness or success? The response is always, oh, must be nice. That is the most annoying response I have ever heard. And people do it all the time. And you know what you are telling somebody when you do that? When somebody experiences success, joy, happiness, the relationship of their dreams, the career of their dreams, and you have the thought of like, oh, must be nice. You literally are acting as if you can't also have that. You are literally being a victim of your own life, responding that way as if you don't have everything in your power that that person also has to get those exact same things. So be honest with yourself. Are you playing the victim role in your life? If you are, it's okay. You don't have to judge it, but be honest. Are you constantly giving away your power to everybody else? Do you constantly act like, oh, poor me. Like, that's nice that Joe got the big break, but I'm over here still struggling paycheck to paycheck. Then empower yourself and do something about it. Quit complaining that you don't have the things that you want. Quit getting angry about other people's success and happiness and accomplishments and growth because you are not empowering yourself to give yourself the same thing. So that's one of the first things is you have to figure out what role are you playing in your life right now? Now, a lot of times, and I mean, I kind of already touched on this, the reason you're playing the role that you're playing is it's serving you in some way. I don't know how it's serving you, but you do. Why are you playing the victim role? Well, because it keeps you safe. If you keep blaming everybody else, if you keep acting as if you're just an unlucky person or nothing good happens to you, the reality is that role, that story keeps you safe from ever having to try. Yes, somebody did have a huge break in their career and their success, but that person also probably took a lot of risk, worked hard, and really went out on a limb to try and get there. They didn't stay in the comfort of what they've always known in order to do that. So how is whatever role you're playing serving you? What is it doing? And almost honestly, you don't got to dig super deep for this. Like, I'll tell you the answer. The answer is that in some way, it's keeping you safe. It's keeping you in a familiar place that makes you feel protected. Everybody does this. I Shoot, I have done this. I have stayed in a protective place and a safe place. And it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes when you've gone through really hardships, really big hardships in life, you need that. You just need to coast for a minute. You need to coast. You need to heal. You need to strategize. You need to figure it out. Maybe rewrite what it is that you want in life. That is okay. And I don't really consider that a victim role. I, so 
I was talking to somebody the other day that was talking about how they haven't really made any progress in their business in a couple of years. It's just been kind of stagnant. It's not going down, but it's also not going up. However, at the same time, this person was making a lot of progress in emotional maturity, spiritual maturity, um, and just really coming into their own. And so when people go through these periods and they feel bad, they're like, but I'm not making any more money. I haven't grown my business at all. I'm not PRing in my workouts. I'm like, yeah, but growth is, growth is different. You're not always going to grow in one area, but that does not mean that you aren't going through serious personal growth while all that other stuff is just kind of in maintenance mode. It's okay to be in maintenance mode while you are doing growth on who you are inside. Because once you do that and you get to that place of tapping into your power, knowing who you are, taking full responsibility, getting clear on the life that you want, all that other stuff, like we talked about in the beginning of this, is just going to be the icing on the cake that reflects what you have going on on the inside. So I actually sometimes prefer if people are in maintenance mode in their career, their relationship, their money, their health and fitness, whatever, but they are doing serious work with their mindset and healing emotional pains and blocks that are keeping them from hitting their full potential. Because I know once we take care of those internal factors, everything else is going to shift to be in alignment with the new you. So you have to figure that out. What is it that keeps you playing in the same role, which is probably a victim role and acting as if you are powerless? And how is it serving you? What it's really doing, though, is putting you in a place of feeling like you are in control, even if that control means you being or acting powerless, it still gives you some sense of control and predictability. Because if you can predict things, then you can control not getting hurt. You can control not being rejected or let down because you have some underlying belief that if you let go of control, then life falls apart. Or if you let go of control and you actually go for what you want, then there's pain involved. Now, the question I would pose to that, is that really the truth? Or are you just making excuses for yourself to avoid the work in order to get what you want? In a world where you can be absolutely anything and you can be anyone, literally, like take a look at your life. Take a look at your life now. Open up your mind. In a world where you can have anything that you want and you can be anybody that you want to be, is this really what you're going to choose in life? I can be anything, so I'm going to choose to be super overweight and to fill my body with stuff that is harmful and to play small in a career that I don't actually like, and to be in a mediocre relationship that doesn't actually fulfill me. Is this really what you're choosing? Because it is a choice. It always is a choice. Look at your life. Take back your power. Just suspend all the stories you've been telling yourself for the time that we are on this podcast. And take a look at your life, like, objectively. Everything. Be honest. Money, career, your health, your fitness, your friendships, your relationship. I don't even care. The car you drive, the money you make, all those things. You can be anything. Like, if I was the universe and I'm like, hey, you can be anything. Is this what you choose? If so, great. I'm so happy for you that you are starting off 2023 with like, yes, this is what I choose. This is what I want for myself in the life that I am very happy to live. But if you're looking at your life and taking full responsibility, if it's not what you choose, then take back your power, be brave and courageous, do the work knowing that you can have and be anything that you want if you are willing to step outside of your comfort zone and go after it. This poses the question, why would we ever choose a situation that makes us unhappy? Why would we ever choose scenarios or a job or a relationship or friendships that leave us feeling unfulfilled and unsatisfied? Very simple. 
pain. You're scared. You are so scared because you have deep rooted pain from could be your childhood, could be last month, could be anything. You have pain that tells you, don't try. When you try, there is pain. Oh, no, no, no. Don't go for the life that you want, man. You can't have that life. That life hurts. What are you going to do? If you really go for the life that you want, you know how hard you could fall if it doesn't work out? You have pain and fear. That is why you choose situations that make you unhappy. The other thing too, what I find a lot of people do that they choose to stay stuck or they choose to choose, choose to choose, choose to stay in situations that make them unhappy is because in some crazy way, we punish ourselves. We have guilt. We have shame. We have things that we have been through where on some level, We punish ourselves thinking we don't deserve good things in this life. We don't deserve to be happy. We don't deserve to have that kind of success. We don't deserve to have that kind of love. And whatever it is, I mean, maybe it's a childhood trauma. Maybe maybe you did something, quote unquote, bad that you feel like you just don't deserve good things in life. So we end up creating scenarios out of self-sabotage and punishing ourselves instead of realizing all of it is a choice. At any time, you can let go and give yourself permission to be happy. Give yourself permission to have the life that you want. So those are two reasons. Pain, we punish ourselves. The third reason why we sometimes find ourselves in situations that would make us unhappy is because you're living on autopilot in your life. You made choices. Here's what you have to remember. The life that you have now is based on thoughts, ideas, and choices from your past. That is how we constantly are creating our life. We make a choice. That choice creates our future. You end up in your future, which is your present moment right now. You got to this present moment by all the choices you made in the past. So a third way that we can end up in situations that we don't want or that are no longer making us happy is that we've been living way too long on autopilot going through the motions. We're stuck in our day-to-day routine. We're stuck in the thought patterns. We are stuck in a mental place in the past, living in the present. And I see this all the time. People get stuck and I'm like, listen, you feel stuck because you are trying to create your future with thoughts from your past. You have to clear up that mental space, the mental and emotional space that got you to where you are right now. You have to let it go. And then you have to create a new path and a new future with a blank space. How do you do that? And this is what I get asked all the time is how do you do that? You have to look at your life honestly, objectively, and take full responsibility. So if you take out a piece of paper and you're like, all right, let me just be super brutally honest with myself. And honestly, honestly, let's be honest. Honestly, if you cannot be honest with yourself, who are you going to be honest with? I mean, really, be your own best friend. Be like, listen, I love you and I want you to be happy. So let's be honest. Where are we totally playing small in our life? Where are we not acknowledging the truth that we're not happy? Write it all out. It might not be every single area. It might just be one area. Whatever it is, though, write it all out. Look at it objectively. Think about what got you to this point. What choices? What was the path like? What were the thoughts like? And you'll see the thread. You'll see how you had a new thought about a new job that led you to applying for that job that led you getting the offer. Then now you find yourself in that job. You see the thought, you thought about getting in a relationship that led you to meeting somebody new. You then started a date. Now you're in that relationship. Everything has a pattern. Life does not just happen to you. You are constantly co-creating with your soul. It's a matter of whether or not you're going to listen to it. So if you're looking at this piece of paper and you're like, wow, there's a lot of areas in here that I just am not happy in anymore. That's okay. Acknowledge that and accept that. Then. You can flip the page literally with a blank slate and ask, all right, with who I am right now in this present moment, the life I created here that I'm living every single day, 
I created when I was 30 through my thoughts and actions, or I created when I was 20 or when I was 15, whenever you got to where you are. But now, whatever age you are right now, who I am right now, let me be 100% present to that and flip the page and ask yourself, what do you want to create? What kind of work do you want to do? What kind of relationships do you want to have? Write it from the present moment because in that is where you create the new thoughts that you can then follow up with action to create what you want for 2023 and beyond. The main takeaway that you have to understand though is you are the only person in the entire world who can choose to change your life. There are other people that can come in to help you and support the decisions that you make, but the only person who can make that decision is you. That is both frustrating, but also very empowering if you let it be. It's frustrating because it's so much easier if we put the responsibility on other people. But it's also so liberating if you put the responsibility on yourself because that means at any moment, you have the power to change your life. Only you do. One new thought, one new idea can lead you in a whole different direction. A brand new perspective can lead you in a totally different direction. So going back to this, back to this whole topic, how do you tap into your power to really create the life that you want? And I'm going to call it co-create because like I said, you are co-creating by listening to what pulls your soul. Your ideas don't just come out of nowhere. The things that make you happy don't just like light up the entire world. Those are very specific to you. So you are co-creating by listening to what is moving your soul. What is pulling you? What is calling your name? What lights you up? We can go specific in this. um, When people are a lot of times trying to figure out like career moves, it's so interesting. This is just everybody. It is so interesting how we doubt the things that are easy but we trust the things that are hard. Like how screwed up is our belief system? So we go to our career and the things that come natural to us, we automatically, we're like, yeah, I can't do that though. That's too easy. No way am I gonna get paid to do that. Like that doesn't even make any sense. We have this belief that it's supposed to be hard. And then when things are hard, we're like, oh, I guess I should trust this. Like life is hard. Like you got to work super hard. Relationships are hard. Like think about how many times you hear that throughout the day. And it's like, I am highly observant of other people. I just love people. And like, I love listening to the things they say all the time because you've heard me talk about this in other podcast episodes because everything you repeatedly tell yourself, you start to believe. And then that becomes your story. So people are like, oh, you know, like, got to work hard to get anywhere in this world. I'm like, F that. I don't want to work hard. I want to work smart and I want to be successful, but I'm not going to go spend 80 hours a week thinking I got to get there. But if that belief serves you, you know what? You keep doing that. You keep busting your ass and wearing yourself out. I don't believe you have to do that, but go right ahead. Or other people like in the dating world, like, well, all the good ones are just gone or they've got baggage or they're this or that. I'm like, That's probably what you're experiencing. The fascinating things about our brains is whatever our beliefs are, our brains will filter out evidence of anything else. If you have a belief that we live in a state of poverty and money is hard to come by, your brain literally, this is like, to me, this is so cool because it also gives you more power that if you change your beliefs and your programming, you can change your entire life. But your brain is constantly, constantly looking for evidence of what your biggest beliefs are about yourself, about others, and about life. So we all live, and like the perfect example of this is like, we all live in the exact same world. How is it possible we can all live in the exact same world, but have totally different experiences? How is it possible that two people can go to the same school, graduate with the same degree, and experience completely different levels of success. It's not because one person's lucky and the other person like the universe was like, "Eh, nope, you get to be unlucky in this life. It's because they have different belief systems around them. So 
when you think about things and you're thinking about like, all right, what beliefs will add this to like your piece of paper? What beliefs did you have that got you to where you are? Are those beliefs still true for you today? And the great thing is, if they're not, you have the choice to change them. Is it true you have to bust your ass and work really, really, really hard to get anywhere in life? Is it true? Mm, No. There's plenty of successful people who work very little. They just make the most of the time that they do work and learn how to delegate and outsource. If you have not read the four hour work week, go read the four hour work week. That's exactly what this is about. Maximum effort and minimal time. Is it true that you have to work out two hours a day, do an extra hour of cardio, diet really, really hard in order to be strong, fit and lean? It can be true, but is it? Mm, No, I can find just as much evidence of people who do not do that, who are strong, fit and lean as people who do do that, that are strong, fit, and lean. Life is just reflecting back to you the beliefs. Is it true that all the good single people are taken and that you are just stuck with the leftovers, whether you like it or not? It can be. Or there's also the reality that exists in the truth and the belief that there is somebody that's right for you who can meet what you are looking for in a partner. Everything, everything in life starts with you on what is going on inside internally. So how do you empower yourself? How do you tap into your power other than the examples that I've given you? Like, we'll just make this really concrete so that you can't be like, oh, I didn't really get clear instructions on how to tap into my power. And I just like heard something about like taking responsibility. Okay, well, here you go. Here's how you're going to do this. Number one, you choose right now in this moment to take full responsibility for your life. No more complaining. No more talking about how like work sucks, your relationship sucks, your friend sucks, your money, your health, you got bad genes, whatever. Whatever excuse you've been telling yourself. Right now, throw it in the trash and choose to take 100% responsibility for your life. You can say it out loud if you want to. I, Ashley Drummonds, choose to take 100% responsibility for my life. It is my responsibility to take care of my happiness, my pain, my suffering, my love, my goals, my dreams. You too, okay? So number one, that is what you're gonna do. Take full responsibility. Number two, think on, and when I say think on the idea, meditate on this. Like let it soak into every cell and core and open your mind up to the idea that you can be anyone and have absolutely anything that you want in this life. Like really open up to that, acknowledge that. Then with that idea and with that power and acknowledging that, look at your life and ask yourself, now that I am aware that I have the power to be anyone and do anything in this life, is this the life that I choose? You don't have to judge that. If no, that's totally fine. If no, good job on taking responsibility. If yes, congratulations, stop listening to this podcast and go live your dream life. But if the answer is no, this is not what I choose, don't judge it. Just recognize you're simply living in a life based on your former previous beliefs and thoughts that got you to where you are. And now that's not what you want. That is okay. If it's not what you want, you're not wrong. You didn't make a mistake. You're not a bad person. You just are now deciding to choose differently. Number three, now holding on to that power and that acknowledgement and recognition in your mind, recognizing again, I have the power and the choice to be anybody that I want to be in this life. Now that I know that I have this choice, who do I want to be and what life do I want to live? Dream big, open up your mind, open up your heart to the greatest version of the life that is absolutely available to you. If it can show up in your mind, if the desire for it exists, it means there is a vibrational match to that desire. There's proof. You cannot have an idea or a desire without some sort of perfect alignment 
to meet that desire. Now, now that you are in that energy of understanding, no, I choose differently. I want differently. And I know I have the power to choose. And here's the life that I want. Take all that energy that you were putting into disempowering yourself by complaining, by not taking action, by playing the old victim role and victim mindset, by telling yourself all the reasons you can't have what you want and that you're stuck. Take all that energy and go back to the previous step and focus it into the power and the recognition that now that you know the life that you want, Take all that energy and put it into creating it. Whatever you have to do, whatever you need to let go of, whatever you need to work on, whatever conversations you need to have, whatever changes you need to make, all that disempowering energy, soak it back up, take that responsibility and empower yourself by making the changes that are necessary in order to get the life that you want. That is how you are going to make change. That is how you can start off 2023 instead of another year in the same position you've been in the last three, five, 10, 15 years. Enough is enough. Make the change, do what you need to do. And then know that deep down, like you really can have everything that you want. I won't go into a whole other podcast on this specific topic, but one of the things that happens a lot when people start out with like New Year's and new goals, and you see this all the time in the gym, is they start out super focused, super driven. They're going to change their health and fitness. And then I give it like eight weeks before they fall off. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people are so hardcore ready to change their life and then real quickly they fall back into old habits? It's because it's easy. It's easy to fall back into the familiar. So how do you prevent yourself from doing that? If you're like, listen, Ashley, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make the change. I'm taking responsibility. I'm going to empower myself and I'm going to take action into creating what I want in my life. You have to create a support system around you that is in alignment with who you want to become. That means if you got to unfollow people on social media who aren't in alignment, if you got to stop hanging out with certain friends whose goals are not in alignment with you, if you got to stop talking to certain people about your life, maybe it's the people that you used to sit around at work and complain about everything with. Stop hanging around those people. Hang out with people who are also doing big things and taking action for their life. If you got to switch gyms, if you got to switch your drive, if you got to change music and start listening to things that motivate you, it is your responsibility too to put the things in place that are going to support that decision. That is the part that's not easy. That's the part that requires real lifestyle changes and you holding yourself accountable with enough discipline to do that. This is where coaches come in handy This is where having a friend or a family member that you feel comfortable and trust with sharing your goals and who you want to become that will hold you accountable. And I mean, really, I call these people the truth tellers, the people who you're like, hey, tomorrow I'm cutting out alcohol, no more sugar. I'm working out five days a week. I'm going to clean up my nutrition like I am doing this. Tell that to somebody who is literally going to call you out when you're like, hey, what are you doing Friday night? You want to go to happy hour? You're like, "Uh, no. Because I'm pretty sure you told me you were taking responsibility for your life and cutting out alcohol for the next 30 days. What are you doing? Those are the people you want around in your life. So to wrap this all up and to welcome in the 2023 season, quit making excuses. Quit pretending because it is just a story you're telling yourself that you aren't fully capable of having everything that you want in life. And make the changes necessary. If you forgot the steps, go back and rewind what I just told you that you need to do. And then go out there and surround yourself in the environment and the people that are going to support and be in alignment with who you want to become. That's the difference between setting a goal on the surface and truly setting a goal that moves your soul and is going to move you into the best version of yourself. All right. I hope you're feeling super like fired up and like you got some work to do because you definitely do. 
Make sure that you subscribe to this podcast. I do intend on releasing these like I was doing once a week so that every single week you've got education, tools, and knowledge to empower you to become your absolute best self. So subscribe, please. It does a huge, tremendous amount. If you could, please leave a review. The reason it does a huge thing is when you leave a review, it makes the podcast more visible to for other people to find it. So to help more people, please leave a review. That would really, plus, I mean, I really like seeing it. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I believe in you. I am so glad that you're here. And I am super pumped for 2023. And I will see you in the next episode.